Hey, greetings, everybody. Welcome to the first edition of Wind and Thunder Radio. I thought I would don my Natani Navajo Bailey trackers hat, which I've been wearing since I was a kid. Since it's in the picture that I'll be posting with this new edition or new series, we're, ju we're just going to, I've decided that I'm just going to start this series of Wind and Thunder Radio. And I, I find that's appropriate because I'm always saying listen to the wind and the name of my book is Listen to the Wind, Speak from the Heart. And my friends call me Thunder, so Wind and Thunder Radio seems appropriate. We'll try that and see how it works. Uh, hopefully everybody will like it. Now, what we're going to talk about is truth, okay? In all ways, shapes, sizes, forms, but it's, we're basically going to stick to truth, truth radio, and we're going to stick to, I don't like the term alternative, but this is an alternative to not only the mainstream, but the alternative to the mainstream, the alternative media, quote unquote. This is going to be beyond that because I'm not, I don't have an agenda here. I also want to mention that this is sponsored by the Campfire Council, Inc., which is a nonprofit corporation, of which I sit on the board. So it's all one ball of wax here. We got Wind and Thunder Radio with the Campfire Council. And so it'll be, I'll probably put a link. Well, I put all these shows on the Campfire Council uh, website anyway, so it's appropriate. Um, I just want to mention at the outset here that I appreciate all those who have donated. It's for a good cause. And it shows where your heart is. It shows that your heart's in the right place. And another theme that I want to keep in mind, you know, as far as this, this station goes, is that uh, tr that of tracking, okay, because I started off as a tracker as a kid in Arizona. And if you read my book, Emergence, it's all about how I grew up in Arizona and the arid zone. And... Uh, how I tracked all over the place as a kid. And so we're going to be tracking the nation's airways. We're going to be tracking the earth. We're going to be looking at the earth as a tracker would look at the earth for signs. Because that's what's really important in this day and age are signs. Signs of which way the the wind is blowing, okay, if you will. Now I appreciate, like I said, I appreciate the donations and I, I would also like to emphasize at this point that we are looking, we're going to start a new tack here on looking for sponsors. And this is not going to be necessarily donation based as much as sponsorship based. Now I know some of you express the desire that you want to see this thing fly. So I'm saying look to your resources as far as if you're a businessman, if you know somebody that's a businessman or woman, if you know somebody that maybe has a retail store or specifically a retail store that might be appropriate for survival such as outdoor uh, 
an outdoor store, camping store, Western Outfitters store, that type of thing, and you want to exchange me mentioning your store for the sponsorship of this program, that's what we'll do. And I'm going to try to incorporate a lot more Native American tradition or comparing the Native American tradition and the Taoist tradition of which I am fully steeped in and a little bit of history with whatever's going on in the world or whatever I'm talking about. And I'll start right off by saying that, and I've talked about this before, but since we're kicking this off here, I will ta talk about council, okay? C-O-U-N-C-I-L, the council who gives counsel, C-O-U-N-S-E-L. Now the tribes have always had a council or a board or a, a group of, let's say elders, wisdom keepers, that sat in council, okay? And when people had problems, they came to these wisdom keepers or they came to the elders and they asked for advice. And the elders had a talking stick which they would pass to one another and nobody else could talk while they held that talking stick. In other words, there were no interruptions. And so we're gonna kind of base, we're gonna try to keep that in mind here with the Campfire Council and Wind and Thunder Radio. Now I'm calling it radio because we really are not a radio station, but these, these YouTube videos could be syndicated. They could be uploaded to uh, iTunes. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. They could be made into podcasts. But I expect that, that this will be a main thrust of mine right now because I have the equipment to do it, which is real simple. I'm doing it right now. It's not the best in the world. The lighting's not the best, the contrast and all that stuff, but it's the words that count, isn't it, people? So we're going to treat, you know, we're going to we're going to take a tack of like this is a tracking in a tracker's mode just like a tracker would look for signs in the desert or wherever he's tracking footprints, signs. We're going to look for the footprints of what's going on in society and the planetary situation and all those type of things. And I might get to the point here where I can somehow incorporate uh, maybe some interviews with other people. And also I want to put the thought out there that if we can hook up with other radio broadcasts or broadcasts of any kind of nature that have to do with the native tradition and uh, what I talk about, then that would be good too. That we could network and maybe do a, a council type thing. The, the bottom line here is, is that we want to get a grassroots movement going across the world. That's my desire, is to get a grassroots movement that can keep in touch as long as we can keep in touch on the internet and try to speak truth here. Now getting back to the tribal thing, uh, and I guess I, I, I've worn a lot of hats, let's get back to the hat, how I look. 
I don't want to look like your typical talking. I don't want to look like I look in everyday life. I mean, this is what I wear <laughs> in everyday life. Levi's, tracker's hat, maybe some jewelry, some turquoise jewelry, maybe a knife, uh, depending on where I am. The looser I can be, you know, like when you're in California, you can't really dress, you can't carry some things in the open. Lots of rules, in, but in Arizona, it's pretty open, so. I want to talk about things that are relevant to our well-being on the planet and things that are relevant to the well-being of ourselves. And so I'll come from a spiritual point of view. And you all probably know by now that my tradition is Native American and some Taoist. In fact, I was known as the Native American Taoist for a long, long time before I even did videos when I just had a blog. That's how it all started, even before my book. Listen to the Wind Speak from the Heart, and then my other book, Emergence. I think it would be good for you people to read those books if you get a chance. I've sent a lot of, I've sent, <laughs> I don't know, I might have sent uh, two, three hundred copies of my book, Emergence, and given dozens and dozens of copies of Listen to the Wind Speak from the Heart Away to people. And Listen to the Wind Speak from the Heart was used as a textbook in a humanities class in Chicago. And it's always available for that purpose if there's any teachers out there that are interested. And I want to say good, uh, I want to say hello to my good friend Eileen, who helped me with that textbook thing in Chicago. In fact, I want to say hi to all my good friends out there that listen to me. Now, I know I don't have a huge following right now, but people, if we push this, this will be an earth-oriented, we don't even have to call it native, but it is, but it will be an earth-oriented program and a warrior and survival and earth and tribal and all those, all of the above, it, that's what it will be. That's the kind of program that it will be. And we'll try to stick to that area. And I will try to tell some stories in regards to the relevancy of whatever's going on. I said that before, but I am a storyteller and I am an award-winning author and I am a pilot and a martial artist, so I've delved into Eastern philosophy pretty deeply. I try to incorporate all the wisdom that I have, and I call myself a wisdom keeper. Some people have called me, <laughs> some people have called me a lot of names. But I think a wisdom keeper is a pretty safe bet. I'm not young, I've been around a while. Young in spirit. Seen a lot of things. and kept pretty close to ritual and sacred tradition as far as the tribal thing, having been raised in Arizona. So I don't know what I want to talk about today other than the fact that I really think that we should there should be a oneness. Maybe, you know, now that I got the introduction of this new series, this new show, 
out of the way. I think that there should be a oneness with all of us, all of the people involved, oneness in relationships, oneness in relationships with the world, with each other, and oneness in relationships that are intimate. And I want to talk about those things today. Oneness. Now, you know, I was thinking about how everybody, you know, seems to be at each other's throat in a lot of ways and not united and not even awake. So I want to talk about the oneness of mankind first, oneness of mankind. And the oneness of mankind is that the, we are all one, metako ye oyasin. That's Lakota for all my relations or we are all one. And that is a belief and we are all one. Now you can believe that or you cannot believe it, but we are all connected. There's the ocean, which is the source of things, great spirit, okay, or the ancient of ancients, or whatever name you want to put on it. There's the ocean, and then there's the drops in the ocean. And one of the drops happens to be thunder, and another drop might happen to be whatever your name is. But we're all part of this ocean, okay? It's something that you gain with enlightenment and through years and years of study. Now when you become enlightened, you realize that you are a drop in that ocean and you are that ocean. In other words, you are God or you are the infinite or you are uh, the supreme source, whatever you want to call it, grandfather, the ancient of ancients. Again, people call it different names, but when you have a realization or when you have an awakening, you realize that you are one with that source. You are that source, and that's what Yeshua and Jesus or Jesus meant when he said, I and the Father are one. That was a metaphor for being one with that source, being that source, being not separated from that source. So then when you look around at all the different people in the world and you seeing or you see you are seeing with different eyes you're seeing that they're not most people are not enlightened they're not aware of them being one with that source they're all hung up in dogmatic religions that separate them from that source and say you gotta go through us and they teach you dogma like accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or burn in hell and that type of thing. And people get all glazed over in their eyes and they get all hooked up in these words from books, but they don't go direct. <laughs> they don't go direct to the source. And going direct to the source means years and years of meditation raising that energy that I've talked about inside you, opening your chakras, opening your energy systems, and letting that just flow into you. You become one with that source. Now, you can't hold that all the time sometimes. You, it's a duality, and so we live in the duality. But our aura our energy field, and I always say it's all about energy, expands out, 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 way, way far out, okay? 
way out there until it becomes one with this creative source. Now when you look around and you see people again that are not enlightened, they're just duh, going along on their everyday BS uh, program. It's like The Matrix. It's like that movie, The Matrix. They're plugged in to this world, which is no part of that source, that infinite source, or that kingdom, okay, that Yeshua talked about. And yes, I'll quote Yeshua because... Let me tell you why I quote the Bible and why I've read the Bible forwards and backwards so it won't stumble people what they read in there and they won't take it the wrong way and they don't buy into the religious dogma. They buy into what enlightenment's all about. And Yasha was, was about enlightenment. He wasn't about religion. Get that to your head. Anything that has to do with religion wasn't about Yeshua, and Yeshua wasn't about religion. And I've read all holy books, okay, the Upanishads, the Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu, you know, the I Ching, everything. Because you have to do that so that you can see and compare and realize and come to certain realizations. You can't just put blinders on and go into this state of mind where you think, you know, that it's all here in this world instead of outside yourself or um, no, not outside yourself. You think it's outside yourself, but instead it's within you. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Bear with me here. I know this is deep. You know, it's hard to explain enlightenment. It's hard to explain wisdom. So let's get back to us looking at the other people that aren't awake yet. It's all a movie. You know, it's like these people that aren't awake, it's like God went to sleep and forgot who he was or who he, she was. And then when they wake up, it's like, oh yeah, I'm God. I'm God goddess. I'm energy. I'm everything that is. I'm grandmother, grandfather. I am grandmother, grandfather. So when you speak to grandfather, you're speaking to yourself. If you're realized, if you're not realized, then it doesn't matter as long as you try, though. That's the point I want to make. I'm not judging anybody. So then this oneness is all people. It's all of us. Some realize that we're one with the other person because we're one with the creative source and others don't. And then there's the ones that are really like these drops of water are really polluted. And they're doing dastardly things, killing, maiming, hurting others. And when they do that, they're hurting themselves. It's like sticking a knife in your own arm or your own throat. You're cutting your own throat. You're hurting yourself when you hurt others. And that's what these leaders are doing, these ignorant leaders. And I call them ignorant. I can call them ignorant and fools and assholes and everything else. And still love them on some level, but on other levels, they're assholes. In the duality, they're assholes because they haven't woken up to the fact okay, that they're divine, they're one with the planet, and it's not just people, it's the planet, it's energy, it's all about energy. I don't know how many times I have to say this before people get it, 
And so when you leave this realm, you turn into that pure energy. This body's nothing. It's nothing. It's an illusion. Just like whatever your name is or whoever you are is an illusion. It's a set of belief systems. So I'm here to wake people up. A voice in the wilderness, a wake-up call. Now, am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect because I have a certain degree of enlightenment or a certain degree of intelligence or a certain degree of facility. It doesn't make me any better than anybody else. Or somebody that would have more facility than me doesn't make them better than me. But it does place a responsibility on your head that you can't ignore. And that is, is that you, you try to form a relationship or you try to sound the, the gong or you try to cut to the marrow. Another thing I like about the title of the radio show, Wind and Thunder, is... Wind and Thunder is a katana, too. It's fitting because, you know, I'm into Eastern philosophy, but a katana is a sword that the samurai used. And they were very much into wind and thunder because that's the name of the katana, wind and thunder. Okay? A cutting to the core. A... Striking before striking, the sword of no sword, the code of Bushido. So I like to cut to the core of things. So that's, a, you know, that's appropriate too. I know I jumped off track there a little, but I wanted to get that in. Now let's talk about oneness in relationships. Let's talk about oneness and relationships. That's all about energy. And I'm talking about intimate relationships here. In order to, for you to be one, like let's say Thunder's sitting here and Thunder's alone. I'm not with any significant other or spouse or mate right now. And I don't know if I ever will be again in this life. But that oneness that you have with other people, you have to realize inside yourself, you know, I'm coming from a relationship here, male, female. Okay. In order for you to know the female, if you're a male, and I've talked about this before, you have to know the female within you, the yin energy within you, and you have to have a connection with that. And it's called internal alchemy. It's an advanced meditation. But it's also a knowing of what that energy is like. So until you know as a man, until you know what that energy is like by knowing it within yourself, your relationship with women will be askew. It will be out of balance. You won't really know, won't know what you're doing. Same thing with women. They have the young energy or the male energy inside themselves. And until they become into oneness with that, they will not realize what it is to have a true relationship outside themselves with a male. So we got all these things about oneness. That's what I'm talking about today, oneness. And what's wrong with the world is that we don't have oneness. We have division. And it seems like the dark forces know how to use this yin and yang or 
black and white or good and evil or hard and soft. They know how to use these things in the duality to divide instead of unite into oneness. They know how to divide people and conquer people. And they know how to divide you within yourself so that you're unsure of things. And they use all kinds of mechanisms. Religion is a big one. Fear is the biggest. Fear is the biggest unseen weapon known to mankind. Or should I say unknown to mankind? Because they can't see the forest for the trees. They can't see that fear is what destroys everything. And these elite or these globalists or whoever they are use this fear to divide and conquer. So what the Campfire Council and what I'm all about is getting a grassroots movement going to where we are all one. Just like the saying, Mataku ye o yasin, all my relations. We are all one. And we need to reach out to each other like brothers and sisters. And those drops in the ocean that are all one with the source. Those of us that are waking up, those that of, of us that realize what I'm talking about need to unite with me. And they need to unite with the Campfire Council because this is a vehicle that I'm putting out there. This is a show that I'm putting out there. I don't want to waste my time. I want to teach people how to expand their auras. I want to teach people how to experience heaven on earth or go to that kingdom within. I'm not a minister. I'm a wisdom keeper. And I don't take that lightly because, again, there's a huge responsibility. And actually, it's somewhat of a curse as well as a blessing because once you realize that, you can't sit idly by and not participate except when I say that, there's a caveat to that. When you have the knowing, you know how to participate without becoming attached. In other words, non-attachment. I've tried to explain this before, and people go, oh, you're just backing out. You're, 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 you're too old, Grandpa, sitting in an armchair, blah, bitty, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not what I mean when I say become detached. What I mean is become detached from the emotionality of it. You don't care about the emotionality of it. In other words, this is really hard to explain from a point of enlightenment. But when you go beyond that duality, you don't get hung up in emotions and drama, but you can still have compassion for and love for. Okay? So when we talk about world affairs, we don't want to talk about them with fear. We don't want to talk about them with them having any kind of control over us. When I'm talking about them to you, it's because I don't want them to have control over you. <laughs> Not that I'm saying, oh my God, look at this, fear this. Everything I talk about, terrorism and all the things that I talk about, and I'm evolving. I'm a work in progress. Even though I say I'm a wisdom keeper and I'm enlightened, that doesn't mean, again, that I'm above anybody else. That means that I have a service to others, okay? 
just like a tracker, let's say I'm looking for a person and I've done this before, I've been on search and rescue teams called upon, both in a, a you know, looking for people from the sky as a pilot and on the ground, walking, crawling, looking at footprints, looking at tracks. So let's liken being a wisdom keeper to being a tracker who needs to be called upon to find somebody that's lost, a man or woman. And I, there's a story about that in my book, Emergence. about some people that get lost and I go out looking for them and I find them huddled, cold, wet and I build a fire and I warm them up and I take leaves and I put them all over them like you know like a thermal coating like a debris hut and I build a fire and I put a reflective set of rocks to reflect the heat in so that they can warm up and save their lives. But before I even got to that point, I tracked them for hours and crawled through the brush and got scratched up and bloodied. This is what you do for your fellow man on an everyday level. Okay? You extend yourself. You have this oneness. You realize your oneness with everything. And these people that are ruining the planet, these people that are ruining the environment, these people that are, what can I say, deluded, lost, blind, psychotic, they have a psychosis. They're the ones that we have to realize are the, are the elements, like when you get lost, somebody's trying to look for you in the wilderness. These are the elements that are trying to destroy you. Okay, the cold and the exhaustion and the, all of these things can be likened to that. These people that are not enlightened that are using their facility or their knowledge for wrong purposes. And when Yeshua spoke of the Good Samaritan or any religious I don't even like the word religious, any spiritual avatar or master always spoke of out extending your hand to others. And even Fool's Crow, the, one of the chief Lakota holy men and, and lame deer, talked about extending your hand to others and teaching them the, the ancient ways and traditions and meditations and ritual and the way of the Anipi or the sweat lodge, just everything, not hiding anything. Those who know the least try to hide things. Those who do not know what's best for others try to hide things. It's all hidden. Don't want to share it. We're here to share, people. And I'm here to take your comments and your input. And I'm here for you to help support Wind and Thunder Radio so that we can start a new alternative to the alternative. And if we have to go beyond YouTube, we will. But it's up to you. So go to the links below or up here to the Campfire Council. Click on it. Fill out the newsletter. But contact me and tell me, hey, Thunder, 
I got a retail store or I know somebody. You have to do some legwork, people, if you want this to work. If you want me to continue to be on here and to disseminate information to you in all areas, financial, political, spiritual, and I'm going to concentrate more on spiritual techniques so you will learn a lot about tracking, about meditation, about Kriya Yoga, about Tantra Yoga, about martial arts. I've done lots of videos already. But from now on, I will talk about these things and I will refer you to the videos that I have done and I'll put the links below. This is going to get organized here. It's going to get real organized. So I wanted to make this video today and let everybody know what, what's going on. Wind and Thunder Radio. Listen to the wind, Cola. This is thunder from the one eye of the heart. Until next time.